Hi everybody, this is Hunter the Hunter Mackinen bringing you another top 10 about uh, video game box art. And this will be wrapping up this little series of uh, videos talking about box art. So I ran a poll on Facebook and Twitter and what I found out was that that majority of you wanted to see the surreal and weird box art. So that's what we're going to be doing. These are my 10 favorite surreal and weird box arts. And unlike the previous two lists, I didn't give the ordering of this list that much thought. What was really more important for me was the fact that these covers were either surreal in the sense that you can't really tell what's going on, or just weird in a kind of something that you can't really even begin to comprehend what's going on. Now mind you, it's probably impossible to talk about weird box art and not bring up a few games that have only ever seen release in Japan, and yes, there's going to be a couple of those. And no, I didn't just go on Google Image Search and type weird box art. Well, I did do that and the results were disappointing. So I do have at least a tertiary familiarity with these games. Even though the order is a bit arbitrary, the number one pick is actually my favorite. So without further ado, let's get on with the list. Now we're first going to start with the PlayStation 1 and 2 covers of Bust a Move. Bust a Move, or Puzzle Bubble as most people know it by, is of course a very popular series of puzzle games from Taito featuring the lovable dinosaur characters Bob and Bob from their earlier Bubble Bobble. And if you look at the history of the Bust a Move slash Puzzle Bubble covers, you'll notice that for the most part Taito had the good sense to market it using those popular cute dinosaur characters. The same apparently did not apply to Acclaim, who instead thought that the Bust a Move covers should be just Absolute nightmare fodder. I mean, the bubblegum baby is bad enough, but, but then the old guy with the toothpicks in his eyes? These are obviously kind of well-known covers, so I decided to have them here straight away and then move on to something a little bit different. Next up is Iron Sword. Wizards and Warriors 2, and no, your eyes are not deceiving you. That is indeed the one, the only, Fabio. Fabio is on the cover of an NES video game. Now it's a popular joke on the internet that this cover really just looks like one of those cheesy romance novels on your mom's night desk. And it is kind of weird that Fabio just happens to be on the cover there. But you know what? I actually think he's kind of rocking that barbarian look. Yeah, this this cover is kind of weird. At number three. It's Kicks for the NES, which is another title puzzle game not perhaps one of my favorites, but not bad. Most of the Kicks covers aren't very interesting, but the NES version is kind of cool because it does include an in-game element, but it's been used kind of cleverly in a way that doesn't give away too much. So it's basically all these different Kickses. Is that the plural of Kicks? It's all these different Kickses going around, and it's very stylish. It's very 80s. I love it, the colors especially. And I think this is a really clever use of in-game elements. Puzzle game boxes are kind of difficult to do right because most of the time you just end up using the blocks or whatever. But no, this, this looks really stylish. Alright, our next entry is our first Japanese exclusive title. It's the cover for Clock Tower for the Super Famicom. Yes, I have played it and I do think it's one of the more underrated early horror titles that you can get. And if you know nothing about Clock Tower, let me just tell you that it's basically Jennifer Connelly trying to not get beheaded by a midget with a giant pair of scissors. But the box is really clever and kind of stylish and cool. It sort of suggests what's going on in the game, but without giving too much away. And I think that statue is really haunting. This is a really good horror game cover as well. All right, our next entry is the cover for Clax. Aha, fooled you. There's no no logos rule on this list this time. But really, this is a really good cover. I really like the idea that they just took a human hand and turned it into a K, and they did a really good job of it. This, cover, this motif does appear in different versions of the game. I'll just show you the TurboGrafx-16 version for it. Well, just get a chance to use the TurboGrafx-16 cover. No, but I really do like this. There are slightly less interesting variants on this cover. But yes, like I said before, sometimes being simple is the best way to go. Next up is our next Japanese exclusive title. It's Sweet Home for the Famicom, the precursor to Capcom's eventual seminal horror title, Resident Evil. Sweet Home pretty much set the design for Resident Evil, minus a few zombies and the ability to defend yourself. But yeah, I really like this horror style cover. You can just barely make out the human faces in it. Honestly, 
really, really fucking disturbing. And in the interest of full disclosure, yes, I am aware Capcom worked with a film studio to basically create a sweet home movie. And I know that this cover is basically sort of the poster for the film, but it doesn't change the fact that it's a really, really stylish, really surreal and weird and honestly quite disturbing cover. Basically putting human faces in any kind of distorted setting is a really great way to catch your eye. It kind of makes me sad I never got to play this one. And staying with the Japanese covers, now, like I said before, puzzle game boxes, usually not very interesting. A lot of times it's just the blocks. And for this game's Western versions, columns, it's no exception. It's pretty straightforward. It's just the blocks from the game. But the Japanese box for columns, which of course, as you know, is one of my favorite puzzle games, has this really awesome Egyptian thing going, which is kind of weird because the game itself doesn't really have much in the way of an Egyptian theme. But I like the clean lines, I love the golden sheen. It suggests enough without giving too much away. Kind of like the Kicks cover from earlier. So yeah, not much to add to that. That's just, just a really cool, surreal looking cover. Well, this isn't jarring at all. Hi, this is Hanu from the future. Uh, talking about another cover that I was supposed to talk on the list and for whatever reason I forgot to talk about it on camera even though I had the list right there in front of me on paper. So, let's get on with this next one which is Phalanx for the Super Nintendo. Now this is yet another slightly more famous weird cover and depending on how you look at it, it's either some country musician sitting on his porch with a spaceship flying by or, if you want to be more creative, it's a... Uh, country musician in space with a spaceship flying behind him. Now the reason I love this cover is the absolute what the fuck factor that it has. And I know it's basically kind of the same thing as the Night Trap cover. It's just kind of shamelessly desperate in trying to get you to pick up the game and play it, especially considering that it's a space shooter from the early 90s. A game in a genre that was super oversaturated at this point in history. But I love it. I just think it's one of the most single, hilarious, but also weird and surreal covers, which is why I had to include it on the list here. And now back to the video, Hanu. All right, at number nine. Yeah, another game that I have actually played, even though I'm more familiar with the Turbo Graphics version. The cover for that is kind of shitty, honestly. This is the Mega Drive cover for Devil's Crush. Now this is something really nifty. I mean, it's just a pinball game, let's not get too wild, but this cover, this really does catch your eye. You really can't even tell what's going on in it. And I remember this cover giving me the heebie-jeebies as a child. Also, I thought it was just kind of cool because back then you didn't see women on video game covers very often, even though it's just that creepy beheaded lady from the game. I will eat your heart. But the vortex-like design, I always really like this kind of a look like you're falling into something. It's disturbing and it really does catch your eye. This is a really good cover from this particular era of gaming, on top of just being weird. And finally, we get to my favorite surreal box art from a game that probably none of you have ever even heard of. And if you have, you might be even a little surprised that this one is my favorite. Yes, this is the cover for pretty much one of the only big hit games, if such a thing even applies, for the infamous Philips CDI. Here it is, Burn Cycle. Burn Cycle. A game so British it'll make you swallow a crumpet. The obscurity here does help because, because what they basically did was to abstract pretty much all the common elements of the game and scramble them all over the place. But it looks really good and you can't even tell what kind of a game it is. I always just get a warm fuzzy feeling from looking at this cover. Mostly because of how weird it is and also because I think it does such a good job of hiding what it's even all about. And that's the list. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you can go ahead and write in the comments what you think are the weirdest and most surreal box art that you know. I really look forward to actually seeing what you guys put down there. And also, I'll take a moment here just to say that videos are going to be a little slow coming up. I'm going to have to move in the near future and that's going to slow things down a little bit. So if come the turn of June and July, there's not a lot of content on here, you'd all know what that is what that's all about. So thank you for watching. I'm Hunter the Hunter Mechanin and see you on the next one.